In the small Scottish town of Erisaig, as you walk out past the Welcome Center, you will find signs that point you to the cemetery. To get there, you have to go past a shipyard. You walk parallel to the shoreline and see the Isles of Egg, Muck, and Rum in the distance. The road begins to turn inland and you pass by the houses of the inhabitants that live in Erisaig. Contrary to most other places you have been in this country, there are no sidewalks here. You find yourself wondering if maybe you have stepped too far off the beaten path and should return to the welcome center and the familiarity of the coach. But you keep going. As you come around the bend, you see a church atop a hill, your destination. At the bottom of the hill, you find the newest half of the cemetery. But as you climb up a wooden set of stairs, the gravestones grow older. You can no longer make out the dates that are on them. You stop as you find a sign that commemorates a poet buried here in an unmarked plot. His name was Alexander MacDonald. He was the greatest Gaelic poet of his time, and perhaps the greatest Gaelic poet to ever live. You have never heard his name before now. I would say that that single hour of my time was one of the most profound experiences that I had on this trip. To me, it really encapsulated both the absolute beauty of this countries we were studying abroad in, as well as the massive length of history that was everywhere that we went. When I think about how this trip impacted me, it really shifted my perspective on just how long history is. It felt like we learned about every single era of history I had ever learned about before. From World War II blitz damage in London, to Charles Darwin's house, to medieval castles, to the Roman baths, to artifacts from centuries before that. I was constantly astounded and overwhelmed by how much has happened in the United Kingdom. As I walked through Erisig, I was just taking in the beauty of the coast, but I was suddenly reminded that even a small town like that has a ton of history. As I learned that day from Alexander MacDonald, you can be the absolute best at something, but even so, you can be forgotten to time. Without getting too existential about it, this study abroad made me really consider how I spend my time, but how I want to spend my time. I know it's so important to spend the time that you have well, where and when you have it. And I would say that I definitely did that on this trip. Thanks in most part to the people that I got to travel with. When I think back to those amazing two weeks abroad, sure, I remember the big things. Seeing Big Ben, the Roman baths, but those memories are far outnumbered by the memories of great times I had with the other people on this trip. Many of the stories that I tell people when they ask, how was England and Scotland? Uh, begin with other people. The story of the time that I went with friends on a hike to watch the sunset over Edinburgh on our last day. Or the time we got lost in Bath and went to the wrong hotel. Or even the time Professor John Gibson and Candace adventured with us around Edinburgh on our free day. I got to know so many new friends and had an amazing time with old friends as well. We had challenges, sure, but we met them, overcame them, and didn't let them ruin our trip. I truly believe that we could have been anywhere in the world, but as long as I was with this group of people, I would have had an amazing time. Since I can't read Gaelic, I would like to leave you with an English translation of one of the poems of Alexander MacDonald's that I found in the cemetery at Erisaig. Hail to you, my gorgeous Scotland, in the youthful month of May time. Golden sunland of green mantle, her streams are fringed with roses. A land full of joy and free of evil, devoid of growling corals as full of kingliness and friendship as an oyster catcher's egg in summer. Grassful, treeful, warmly clothed, beloved, is this hospitable, prosperous country. <laughs>